This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Welcome back to Monic Land. Hey, hey, Leon, how are you today? I'm pretty good, and you? Well, I'm really good today too. Nice. Um, Monic Land is. Uh, these days, literally around the world. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so in our interview part today, I'll talk to my friend Katsueno in Japan. Ooh. Uh, and to me, there was really fascinating insights. Yeah. And so wait for the interview in a bit. But of course, we start with a little bit of news. And in this case, once again, from the Mordic 3 beta. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's always <laughs> always interesting. Uh, there's one thing I forgot to mention last week uh, or last time, 14 days ago, and that was the fact that our Mortibox, our test environment for Mordic features or, or issues and pull requests, is now also available for Mordic 3. And the URL is m3.mordibox.com. Dot com, so for everybody who wants to play around with things, but more importantly, who wants to test certain GitHub features, that's the place to go. I'll put it to the show notes. Nice. Yeah. Then um, the Mordic team is making fantastic progress. And uh, I would like to start with a little quote from um, Jim Blake over in Canada at Sightly's, um, who wrote a nice piece in, in Slack. And he said... Uh, I so look forward to seeing where Mordic 3 will take things and what contributions our own in-house development team can bring to the table as well. We really do want Mordic to be primary in our technology stack and are happy to contribute in meaningful ways as we learn more about how the system works and perhaps things we can tweak or debug. Nonetheless, I'm convinced that Mordic will just get better and better. So once again, keep up the good work, everyone. And always remember the team philosophy, T-E-A-M. Together, everyone achieves more. Yeah, that's the true spirit of open source. He just understood it in the fullest way. Yeah, I can applaud that as well as I applaud all the new people that came on board to support the Mordic 3 finalization. Oh yeah, really helpful. Uh, yeah, and speaking of that, uh, I already mentioned that we're making really good progress, or the team rather, uh, in testing and fixing and, and ensuring the quality. Yeah. Um, they are at good pace, but still everyone can help uh, supporting that. Um, everyone is welcome. It's not too late. So please, please, by all means, go to the team and, and help them out. Come and contribute. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for this specific contribu contribution, I'll repeat the, the link in the show notes. Then we have a little bit of follow-up about our ongoing topic of a active address verification. Yeah. You and I talked about that in the last, uh, this is not a blog post, it's a podcast, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> in the last podcast. Um, but we did have a blog post uh, after the fact where we try to sort out things um, that came up during the podcast mm -hmm. and uh, just to make sure everybody is aware of it let me just very quickly mention the highlights of that blog post one thing is um, how does that verification service work and that's different for sms or short messages um, that is really based on a database of uh, connected phone numbers where that's the only way to go and it's, it's a matter of quality to have a good database and so that's a really valuable service it's a paid service they should have good quality yeah yeah but, but what they deliver here is that that service whereas for the email testing it's also the same paid service but what they do in this case is the only thing that's possible again and in the case of email it's actual testing trying the email uh, as far as smtp allows it it doesn't work for all the email services out there. Um, so the the point here is that that can only be done asynchronous today. Mm -hmm. So it's not when I enter something in the form or submit the form, it, it is not able to tell me, hey, you had a typo. Instead, in a later campaign step, it can uh, verify the email address at best, it might be able yeah. to, to show me a focus item or something, mm -hmm. communicate back to me. Yep. Um, and that's for technical reasons. 
Uh, so the verification these days is done in JavaScript. So purely client side, and then so that cannot involve that the test for technical reasons. Yeah. Also, um, there's a little bit of, of a catch here if, if you have a, a let's say a bot who is submitting the form again and again. And every time it costs a tiny little bit of money, then uh, that may sum up to some serious money. So, in other words, if we really want to achieve that that live verification, we need to do major changes. One would be that uh, in the more core, we w would have to add some sort of server-side verification or val validation. And uh, on the other hand, the testing with a paid service can be expensive. Yeah, On yeah. the other hand, it's fairly trivial and there are existing libraries. So the way to go would be to implement that testing directly in Mautic so we don't have to pay any money for the single test. So if we would really implement that, then we have that nice situation that a typo in a form could, or at least uh, some percentage of those typos could be caught and we could get back to the user directly and uh, tell them, hey, uh, this might be a misspelling, please recheck. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the point is that even if you do, if you have the double, double opt-in, uh, you are going to lose that user mm -hmm. and we have no way of, of communicating back. Yeah. And uh, nobody in the world wants to use contacts and leads. Of course not. So uh, might be interesting. If it's interesting for you as a listener, uh, please send me a note. Uh, we are currently um, collecting all sorts of uh, input for that and, and maybe we'll manage to do a little crowdfunding or micro crowdfunding rather and work with our friend Greg White to get the feature actually implemented. Yeah, nice. Good. Um, next up, I wanted to talk about tags and I called it the power of tags because it's a uh, underestimated feature in 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 Mautic it is, to yeah. work with tags. Um, what I wanted to do really is to give you a, a super quick intro so we're all on, all on the same page and then some advanced examples of, of what tags can do for us. Um, and uh, that's also a starting point for your own inspiration. Let's go. Good. So um, what are tags? What are they good for? What, what's the difference to other things? Uh, obviously, we're talking about uh, users, user properties, the regular contact properties, the fields and custom fields, etc. We all know that. Also, users are in segments, in categories, at stages, they have points. Uh, why, why in the world do we need tags? Um, basically, it's a different point of view. Um, so, when we look at tags, we, we always consider the single user. We don't ha want to have a list of tags because that would really duplicate the, the segment feature. No. Um, we want to know something about the user. We want to take a note and then to look back at that note later in the process. So, and, and that, all that without spoiling or spending a, a custom field. Of course, we could have custom fields for everything, but, but the, the number is limited and, yeah. and we want, don't want to blow up the database. So we, we use those little sticky notes um, and just add and remove the, the sticky notes from the contact. Basically, it's just, tags is just another word for, for labels. Yeah. Um, okay, so far, so good. We all know labels from our own laptop, etc. But it's really used to its full potential. For Mautic, though, it, it is super important to understand the, the concept and the potential. So uh, let me give you some examples. The typical use case for tags is sort of been there, done that. So we want to take a note that this individual user has already downloaded that asset or has already visited that page. Yep. And uh, a trivial example, why we want to use that is because we don't want to give him a focus item and point him to something that he already saw. Yeah, of course. Or um, don't want to send him an email in the first place on something that he already discovered on the website himself. So what we do is take a note, so set a tag at the point uh, that we're interested in. And so that that's uh, 
sticks to the user and whenever we want to take some action then we check for that tag and um, react accordingly so we either do nothing or take some some different course uh, offer some diff different asset or whatever have you um, it also works the other way around so if we know that the user has already already been interested in let's say a certain car model taking a, a ride on, on that model yeah. um, that's a customer case we had just last week I think mm -hmm. um, so we know there, that he or she was in a booking process for a certain model we, we take uh, well, we set tags for exactly that yeah. and when that user comes back a week later we check for existing tags and we display him a focus item or dynamic web content right on the homepage and say, hey, here's your car still waiting for you. Please pick up where you left. And uh, that's really super powerful. Obviously, it doesn't work for, for Amazon with <laughs> 20,000 or, or, I don't know, 20, 20 million products probably. But if, if you have a limited number of, of items or just want to take the high priority items, uh, then that's super cool. It's a really powerful thing. Oh, yeah. Um, the funny thing there is also that um, obviously you don't want to give uh, them two focus items at a time, so you need to make a decision which is the focus item to react on. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if a typical strategy w would be to use just the latest one that the user visited, yep. so part of the process would be to let the tags manage themselves. So <laughs> I set a tag for this car model and remove all the other tags that may be pre-existing. Self-managing, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah one, one more um, example uh, that is also from a customer project but completely different use case. And the idea here was to say, I want to give the user a landing page mm -hmm. with all the assets that he or she requested in the past. Yeah. Um, hmm. No, Mordek is not prepared to do that, or is it? Not yet. No, not not at all. But it is powerful, and, and uh, tags are our savers here. Uh, so what we do is set a tag whenever a an asset is requested, mm -hmm. and um, have a landing page with dynamic web content. So we now combine uh, DWC with tags and have. Uh, a single dynamic web content for every asset yep. uh, where we filter on the existence of, of the certain tag and uh, display the asset or not. Yeah. And now we have a landing page with all my assets. Perfect. Crazy, huh? <laughs> so easy. Uh, no, it's not really easy. Uh, well, but if one, you know the power of tags, it is easy. Yeah, if, it, if, you, if. <laughs> if you have a certain problem and you have the, the idea of tags in mind, then the, then more more often than not, that's the way to go. Yeah. Um, tags are more or less a hidden feature. No, like not it's at all. Not that. <laughs> yeah, it's, but it's hard to understand. I mean, it's um, it, it starts with with the management of tags. Yeah, coming to management. If you want to edit tags, you can manually edit them. You have to go into the details of a contact and you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Then you can manually add or remove tags, mm. which is not that like handy. Mm. And only in edit mode, right? Yeah. In, in view mode, they are on the right-hand side and in edit mode, they are in the actual data. Yeah, we need improvements on that. So at the moment, you can add tags via campaigns, forum, and points, like point actions and uh, point triggers. Mm -hmm. And you can also add tags via HTML and remove them. So in any place you can use HTML, you can just use the Mautic tracking pixel and add a parameter that says tags and the tags you want to add or remove. And it's super handy to just be able to um, place a tag if somebody visits a website that chats the tracking page skill with the parameter. Yeah, or a thank you page, for instance, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, that's true, super powerful. So in some CMS plugins, we even have that uh, tag setting thing explicitly, so mm -hmm. you don't need the HTML, but uh, everywhere else you have a very, very simple HTML implementation. Yeah. 
Okay, we will put all that in a uh, knowledge base article, uh, as as brief as we just did it, but plus a little bit of, of technical code, etc., and maybe a screenshot or two. Uh, so you'll find that in the show notes too. As always. Yeah. Um, now that's powerful already, and, and again, please, please make sure you always think of uh, tags when you have a certain problem um, and it's so, so powerful already. But that that doesn't mean that it's uh, complete. There are uh, numerous feature wishes around tags to make it even more powerful. Um, and it's not only about setting and removing tags, uh, there are all kind of other things like um, uh, one thing we just had was uh, to set dynamic values to, to, to use, a, let's say, a custom field uh, uh, of, the, of the contact and put that in as a, as a contact value. Yeah. Let, think of a country, for instance, not a custom field, but a, a dynamic value. Um, or if you have been using the tracking pixel already for tags, you will probably have noticed that it, it gets spammed sometimes. So we have crazy values in the tag database. You don't know where it comes from. The reason is um, there are scripts out there that try to hack websites through SQL injection. Mm -hmm. And they, try, they do that by modifying the values of um, get parameters and um, try all sorts of, of values there. And um, if they just modify the value of the tag parameter, <laughs> all of a sudden we have crazy stuff in the database so the, the feature idea here would be to say okay let's make this this um or let's an, add an on and off switch to the creation of new tag names through the tracking pixel um if we can just set existing tag names in many in many cases that's absolutely sufficient if we can add new na new names through the tracking pixel and sometimes we need that in other cases it just attracts spam yeah so what we really need is just like attack management just the pure uh, possibility to just list all existing tags directly in Mautic so you don't have to go through the database you need a feature that shows the usage of tags so if a tag is in use and in how many places and Maybe there are texts that are not even used anymore and can be trashed. And it would be nice to have the ability to rename or just delete text just overall and not for a single contact. Mm -hmm. That would be super handy. Or to just comment on text. Maybe your colleague added a new tag and needs like more refinement and wanted to do that a day later. So he just can add a comment. I will be working on that. No, to me it would be already valuable if I knew for myself what I did three months ago. <laughs> True. Or what you did, maybe. <laughs> See? We're awesome. Yeah. Or, or even um, uh, adding new tags is some, so, sometimes tricky. Uh, you cannot not add new tag names from, from all places. So maybe that would also be a central place to do that. Yeah. The point is... Um, we really think this is a valuable feature. We need it very, or we wish for it very frequently. So we made up our mind to actually implement that feature. Uh, before we start doing that, we would love to hear back from you. So I'll point to the uh, forum wishlist um, category or, or thread for the tag manager. That's a pre existing wish that many people have out there and it's probably a good thing to collect as many ideas as possible before we start implementing yep. so please um, if you're interested take a minute look at the thread and uh, give us your feedback thanks thanks <laughs> and by the way in order to implement that we need developers we have developers so we do projects we do contribution but we always want more developers so if you are one if you uh would like to move to germany <laughs> or are already already in germany or if you know somebody who might be interested um we would love to have you on the team of we would love to have, have our local teams uh, our local team here which is really close together we also work with people internationally but uh, we like to see our uh, local team grow even faster. So get in touch. 
Good. Get in touch. Uh, next, let's get in touch with uh, Katsueno over in Japan. Let's go. I'm really happy that finally I found the right person to tell me about Mordic in Japan. First of all, what time is it over there? Right now it's uh, past 7, seven, seven before 7.30. In the evening? Oh, man. Okay. Evening, yeah. Okay, uh, even more. Thank you very much for your time. Time difference is, is a big deal in the Mordic product. It's a good thing that, that the community is, is really all over the world, but for conversations like this, but also for team meetings, it is quite a challenge to find good time slots. So, okay, uh, I suspect not everybody in the world has heard of you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what do you do with Mordic? All right. So my name is Katsueno. I am a chief communication officer of Concrete 5 Japan Inc. Uh, I mainly represent a Concrete 5 CMS made in Portland, Oregon, USA which is also open source uh, CMS. And uh, on the other side, uh, so uh, Concrete Pub is open source. Uh, so I love open source. I was originally uh, living in LA, USA, used to make film back in the time, but mm. somehow dropped into the web field after you know many transitions. And I fell in love in open source. I, I became a WordPress community member as well as Concrete 5 and then end up uh, being the uh, member of the Mautic community of Japan as well. Then I started hosting, I got to know Mautic like back in 2016, 15, I think. Then I started to organize my local Mautic meetup called Mautic Meetup Nagoya. That's the name of the city I live near. Mm -hmm. Then I've been hosting the monthly meetup since. So my Mautic meetup was one of the world most number of the meetup, uh, Mautic meetup hosted in the world, I think. <laughs> So uh, it's it's uh, we had to change the name as a web marketing meetup because we wanted to cover other uh, op marketing automation tools in, in addition to Mautic, but we we do still cover Mautic. So oh, we've been having meetup uh, over fifty times. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah, let's talk about the the meetup a little bit later. Uh, just for the full background. When you say you were originally a, a film guy, that means you, you don't have a professional education in, in IT or uh, engineering or anything, right? Yeah, not at all. Like I start using PC when I was three or four, according to my gran grandpa, wow. but <laughs> I don't have any formal education. Of course, uh, you know, film industry, you, you started to utilize PC. So uh, then... As an indie filmmaker, you have to promote your film. So you had to start making website by yourself to promote your own film. So that's kind of how I got into the uh, film. Oh, so you got a part-time job, college job to upload the video to the website after you edit your video. So that's kind of how I got into the uh, this uh, web industry. So that was a slippery slope then, right? <laughs> yep. Okay, let's talk about Japan and marketing automation first. Automation is really different at a different stage around the world. How big is it in, in Japan? Are people used to it? Are, are companies using it? Uh, I have two different answers. One is that, yes, big corporations using a lot marketing automation. Uh, major players such as Marketo, Adobe Experience Manager, and you know, HubSpot, they have a big presence in Japan. So many big corporations use uh, marketing automation system to utilize their marketing and online presence. However, um, on the other hand, small to mid businesses of Japan, unfortunately, they are still kind of fed up by just catching up their business itself. So they are not being able to catch up to utilize the marketing automation yet. So we are still struggling to teach uh, local businesses, small businesses to utilize more marketing automation. Okay. And how do businesses use 
IT in general is is the use of open source in general is a, is a concept well known i mean do people use wordpress and do they understand how open source works for instance uh yes and no uh so many japanese businesses started to use wordpress wordpress is the one of the uh, successful open source uh software and then um, cms in japan as well but uh, of course many many web agencies in japan understand that it is open source but uh, many business owners who just want to make their own website just understand that it is one of the free software no that's not different over here yeah the many plugins are available for free many things are available for free yeah so it's kind of yeah okay it, if it's the same maybe it's the same with the rest of the world but it's uh pretty much the same i guess and do you have any idea i mean wordpress is, is one thing but other than that do you have any idea whether the market share is is similar? Are people using the same products that the rest of the world is using on average? Or are there very specific products? Are there open source projects specific to Japan, for instance, that we don't even, uh, that I don't, wouldn't know of? So things like that? Um, actually, um, some of the major uh, software, like Forefront software or project, Yes, uh, it's, you know, like Salesforce or HubSpot, Marketo, like those um, software are very popular in Japan. Mm. But there are many Japanese specific software and open source projects as well. Yeah. So uh, because of, uh, I guess, one of the reason is that we use, speak different languages, Japanese, we have its own culture some of the business style has its own uh, way of dealing with businesses. Sometimes we still use fax, you know, all the time. And we use the stamp, you know, instead of the signature. So um, I guess some of the reason is because of the business differences. Then uh, there are some popularity towards the Japanese, its own uh, services and project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a little bit of that, that over here as well, where legal requirements are such that could not be fulfilled by US products or other products, uh, led to the fact that, that local projects or commercial products had a chance to, to come up and grow. But I, I suspect that's even more so in Japan. But nonetheless, you'd mentioned the concept of meetups, you even have your own one. And for the other big around the world open source projects, you also have meetups. You do have WordPress meetups, surely, right? Uh, yes. Uh, so one one of the uh, probably many people knows about open source project, and then one of the successful one is the WordPress. It's uh, no question the WordPress is very popular in Japan. I uh, help host a couple work camp, Nagoya version of the work camp mm -hmm. for six times Good. and over a couple hundred attendees like come in every year. And I've spoken to a couple work camp in Japan, like Tokyo or Osaka as well. And yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's great that uh, even like many people from different aspects, different businesses from freelancer to agency to corporation come together and build uh, uh, one great product where I ended up meeting my wife. So uh, oh. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, open source culture. It's uh, really great in Japan as well. Oh, okay. Lovely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so <laughs> open source can do many good things. Wow. And I have my own little story about uh, open source in Mordic because as you know I'm, I'm a type of 3 CMS guy and uh, the worldwide type of 3 community loves to do their yearly snowboard tour and I talked about that in the podcast before and only really late we found out that the Japanese type of 3 community is doing their own snowboard tour events be without Really, uh, letting anybody else know so that's really a hidden 
community from our perspective. And um, it's a little bit similar with the Mordic community. It's we, we don't really know what's going on. We see it's pretty active. But how does it really work? Can you give us a little bit insight there? Who is the community? Uh, how and where do they interconnect? How do they share, etc.? Okay, uh, so a Mautic community in Japan and also uh, open source community in Japan in general, for me, uh, it's quite similar to how they start. First of all, we hear about the project. These projects are awesome, you know, uh, g great feature. And Mautic especially, it was the first kind of op marketing automation that we are waiting for. So uh, many... Um, People started to get interested in and then start forming the small group. And we started Face Mautic Japan community uh, in a Facebook group. And we're talking 2015 or? Yeah, it was uh, 2016. Okay. Uh, first Mautic meetup Tokyo was uh, February of 2016. And I saw that happening, so I launched my first Mautic meetup Nagoya, uh, I think March or April of 2016 in Nagoya. Mm -hmm. So people around me are really interested in open source. So if there's new attractive product, uh, people come and check it out. So that's how Japanese people get together and start forming the group. Good and um, yeah, we all we all know Mordic is pretty much experiencing like like a revival now. Uh, so after the acquisition in 2019 and and all the, the slowdown that was ahead of that, the global community at least is rebooting, is is growing exponentially. The, the product is back on track and and is promising a lot of new features after 3.0 is being released, um, but. Is there anything special that the Mordic community or the Mordic in general could do to be even more attractive for the Japanese market? Is there anything specific to it? Uh, yeah, so um, one thing I can kind of mention is that uh, maybe not the Mordic community, but maybe Mordic community can help. But So Mordic used to have a free hosting services uh, to thousand contact for free or something yeah. that really help attract many Japanese user to uh, people who hasn't even touched what the marketing automation is mm -hmm. because some business owner uh, who don't have any knowledge of the server could try out because many many proprietary other marketing automation you do Maybe, maybe there are free trial services, but after that, you do have to commit like a couple hundred bucks per month uh, service fee. So uh, that helped attract the um, many beginning Mautic users. So uh, I'm not really expecting to have the same kind of free services. Uh, of course, I understand the business side of it, but I want something that... Uh, similar to that attract to the um, uh, small business owners uh, or like businesses to, to get. Katz, I'm, I'm hearing that a lot. So, so le let me ask a little bit deeper here. The typical answer to that is for trial, you have the sandbox and can play around with that. But I, when I get you right, it's like people would love to have a free tier entry level a uh, SaaS version that can be used for production for very small sites. And, and when they grow bigger, they either pay money to somebody or switch somewhere else or, or uh, do their own hosting, whatever they like, like they do with WordPress. So is, it, is that right? Do people want to use a free service for production or is it more about the easy, effortless trying out and, and getting started? Yeah, so um, maybe I might have to go to the sidetrack a bit, but um, the reason why I thought that the free services is important is because many small Japanese businesses haven't been able to utilize the mar marketing automation. That's 
actually more the fundamental problem of the Japanese market itself. So uh, uh, it's kind of hard to say, but if business owner thinks that it, sometime marketing automation and implementing the campaign and implement the customer journey map into the、uh, marketing、uh, strategy cannot really satisfy with one month trial period to understand the business need. So,、uh, of course, that is maybe a different question but,、uh, to answer. But that's, of course, maybe some business o w n e r u n d e r s t a n d the Uh, potential of marketing automation during the sandbox period or trial like stuff. But I believe there's more that we need to educate small businesses in Japan. Yeah, that's、um, good stuff. And, and it's, it's tricky, as you say, because it, it's not inexpensive to, to provide that sort of thing. And it's also a、uh, joint effort between. Let's say the marketing team of Mordic and maybe hosting or SaaS providers. But I'm sure we can come up with something like, like other communities do as well. I think it's, it's really, really valuable、uh, to make the product accessible and it's really valuable for lead generation for those hosting providers and, and visibility and everything. Okie doke. Now, when we look at the community though, Uh, there is an existing community. You told us about, about them.、Um, is there anything we could do to get them closer together and, and also to get them closer to the rest of the world, like, like the global community? Yes, that's always the、um, question s and always kind of sometimes a hard question to answer because there's、uh, one gap between English. And non English、uh, community, which is the language barrier.、Mm-hmm. So, before m a l t i c community had a Japanese website called jp.maltic.org, it was a WordPress、uh, site、mm-hmm. that I and my partner, Hishi, translated、uh, original m a l t i c document, I mean, WordPress site, to the Japanese. And we used to moderate the Japanese forum under that domain. Yeah. So hopefully, in some way, we could rebump those、uh, multilingual support and Japanese、uh, support so that Japanese people started to feel less、uh, boundary because many Japanese users. Uh, just don't want to use the services which are not translated into the language. Even though m a l t i c has the language、um, file that s u p p o r t the Japanese, but the marketing website、uh, won't be w a n t the Japanese languages and Japanese support. Okay, that's important and, and should be, if there's something existing already, that, that should be a priority to get that. Back up to speed. If it, if it is old and outdated and, and maybe vacated,、uh, we should absolutely take care of that. Okay.、Um, yeah, I, I'll take that with me. And、um, I'm looking at it as we speak. There's even a forum, but it doesn't look very up to date. And we also, on the other hand, on the general forums like forum.mordic.org, there is a Mordic in Japan category which is not used. I'm not even sure it can be used in an Japanese letters.、Uh, and then there is this Facebook group. So, so I think we should, should also、uh, figure out where Japanese discussions should take place. And that should help the community, that should help the product.、Um, and yeah, once the community gets stronger, I, I think we will automatically see more. Contribution and more communication from Japanese developers and other contributors to the global community. Wouldn't you think so? Yes, absolutely. So,、uh, you know, we, we hope that,、uh, you know, no question, I love open source、uh, product and project. 
uh, I grow grow up in open source. I you know I as I said earlier, I marry to my wife through open source project. So uh, and I don't see any reason that marketing automation open source project fail. Uh, so uh, then Japanese people are really um, looking forward to the future of the Mautic. Yeah, yeah, and I, I saw that there was some contribution uh, a while ago to to GitHub and, and other places in the forums um, or Slack rather, and it ceased um, probably to to the general slowdown. And like like everywhere, we need to reach out and get, get to, to people uh, fr from the early days, but also find new people and make them understand that, that we are now in a much better world. So all the frustration that people had with, with the, the, the ink maybe and then the shutdown of, of the free tier and, and uh, you're also talking about, about the, the leadership things, etc. That's understandable, but... but um, it is the past, really, and uh, the the big issue or the big challenge that we have is really to not only make the new world even better, but also to to spread the world, uh, to spread the word. Talking about spreading, I mean, we have to mention we we are recording this in the middle of, of or at the early days of the Corona pandemic. Um, you're sitting at home recording this, right? Yes. Uh, we we all don't know where it's going. It's going to be over eventually. Uh, the, the the one question I have, because we have the same discussion, is: Is there a stronger move to virtual conferences these days? I mean, not on, not only to doing a webinar, but to doing a whole conference online. Is that the thing that you see? Yes. Uh, so of course, because uh, we just had to cancel one of our, you know, our former Mautic Nagoya meetup last night oh <laughs> due to God. this uh, coronavirus. One of the uh, venue, the co-working office, they they wanted to close early to let uh, worker home, so we had to cancel the last night uh, meetup. But um, yeah, so because of that, and also. Uh, in addition, uh, all the public school got canceled. So uh, kids are staying at home. So there's a huge movement right now as we speak that many online education uh, education services start providing the free trial services or extended their free trial or even made uh, paid uh, area available to those kids. Yeah. So uh, then uh, many events uh, has been canceled. So many speakers start to turn their prepare uh, keynote to the uh, the online uh, YouTube lives or Zoom conferences or those. Um, you know, we started to utilize that in in Japan as well. And but but you know. I think it's good to meet in person and it's good to drink beer together after the meetup. Oh, so uh, <laughs> hopefully uh, hopefully this uh, coronavirus stuff is going to be over and that we can drink, come back and drink again together. That's for sure. <laughs> when we, it couldn't get any better than that. We should stop the interview right here. But uh, I have one more question for you. And that is um, what sort of technical improvement maybe what integration or so what do you love to see that would help you in, in japan from from the modic side yes so uh one of the uh you know attraction to the user whether it's open source or proprietary software it's a it's a feature and then also we i feel that it's important for me to tell the community what's important in the uh our market you know, so for example, marketing automation and uh, marketing itself in general, online marketing, it's the, for example, the text uh, messaging services like, you know, I love to see like implementation of the Japanese Korean text messaging service such as Line or uh, maybe for if you want to uh, attract to the Chinese market, like help uh, the integration of the Weibo chat services. Yeah, those are probably um, uh, important feature that uh, and integration that maybe I like to see. Okay, 
Um, yeah, so I, I guess I find that really interesting. The, the only thing is that from, for a, let's say, a European or US engineer, it's pretty far away. And maybe the, we could do some collaboration and uh, maybe your uh, engineers could answer some questions at, at least for, for if somebody over here takes a work and then does a, a line integration. Uh, so it's always good good to have a, a local liaison at least. Uh, cool. Yes. Very good. It's, it's, uh, I want to w mention one more add-on, and that is that, that you recommended me to talk to, to Acquia as well, because they have a strong presence in, in Japan, which is more targeted, obviously, to the enterprise market. And uh, you, you also co-run the, the, or a colleague of yours co-runs the Tokyo meetup, right? Yes, uh, we, we, they just rebooted the to me, Mautic meetup Tokyo last month, yeah. Seems to be really successful. And uh, I, I think that's a really good idea and I'll, I'll reach out to them. And so we, we'll have a follow-up interview on the, on the Japanese market. But for today, uh, that was a lot of fascinating insights and... Uh, I mean, people over here and certainly in other parts of the world as well, we don't know much about Japan. So so thank you very much for that. Um, everybody else, keep in mind that, that Japan is a huge market. For one thing, it's way, way bigger than the German market, for instance. It, it is a culture of its own. I hope I have the chance to travel there one, one day. Uh, but but it, it's a really important for Mordic too. And so we'll do what we can to support you guys in, in Nagoya and where else in the country. Good. Thank you very much. Where can people find you online? Uh, so I'm on Katz515 on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Then I, I own the domain katzweno.com and you have my blog there. Okay, good. I put that in the show notes. And um, yeah, I hope we'll, we'll hear a lot from Japan and vice versa going forward. Thank you once again for your time today. And uh, well, good night, I have to say, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. Yeah, that was a really nice interview. It gave some really close insights on uh, like the Mautic world in Japan over there. And do you think there will be any improvements on the Japan Mautic site? Yeah, this is uh, jp.mordic.org um, uh, is, is in a bad shape, I have to say. Mm -hmm. um, and we discussed that uh, in, in the marketing team. And uh, so the good news is that we'll have the Mordic Org relaunch in general uh, coming in really soon, uh, but that will be English first. Mm -hmm. And then immediately we'll work on making it multi-language which mostly means translating the new content and making sure there's a process for maintaining uh, all the changes um, going forward. Uh, there are other language versions affected as well. We, we have the Brazil website, we mm -hmm. have the German website. Yep. All of that are not in great shape, partly broken even, so we'll be very happy to switch those off and have them all in a single page tree with uh, just multiple language versions yeah very nice yeah uh i don't think we ever discussed the modic.org relaunch did we no we did not yet okay uh so that was a little sneak peek for you in that case um maybe if, if we have some spare time the next couple of episodes we we'll, we we'll talk about that too yeah um for now uh let's not go any deeper there but we're looking forward to it what else is going on um Obviously, the sprint is coming up. Oh, yeah. Um, we already packed our... No, we didn't pack our suit suitcase, did you? Uh, I <laughs> no, did no, not, yeah. A couple of weeks ago. But uh, the booking is open. We did all the booking uh, with a no nice hotel deal for everybody who is um, coming. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested um, in staying in the same hotel as everybody else is, go to the blog post that we have out there for the sprint. There's also a button for booking the hotel mm -hmm. and there's a button um, for signing up to the event we have a, a event right event now at the price of zero euros <laughs> nice perfect deal yeah couldn't be better um 
Yeah, pl- but we do want to know that you're coming, and we really hope you are. Always. Teams are pre- preparing these days, mm-hmm. uh, so we have a, not only an agenda, but we have all the organiza- organization needed. We have tasks handy. We are prepared for rem- remote contribution. Oh, so right. do sign up as well if you are intending to contribute remotely. Um, once again, the link is in the show notes for the blog post, and, and all, every, everything else is included in that blog post. Yeah, remotely is possible and is welcome. But if you have the chance, please do uh, come in person. We love to have many people there to uh, work closely together, yep. to have the beer in the evening or whatever you like, um, and to get to know each other very well. Yep. The, the impression from last year's Mordic Summit is still fresh and it was such a great event. And uh, that's only possible in person. Yeah, one thing we have to mention is uh, that stupid little, little virus. No, of course. Um, obviously, we are we are a really small group, uh, just a couple of handful of people. We're not in a large crowd, and we make sure to to stay that way. So we'll certainly be fine. Uh, yeah, so I, I have no issues. Once again, this sprint is open for everyone. It is easily accessible. It's not just for uh, existing team members or super uh, experts in Mordic. It's really even for newbies. If you're interested, if you want to learn about Mordic, if you want to get to know the people and come back as a better Mordic person. Mortician. (laughs) More better mortician, yeah. Um, Then that's the place to go. And we're so happy to meet you there in Ghent in Belgium. Okay, more about this and about everything else from the Mordic world in two weeks from now. Um, I have one more thing before we go. Uh, I really would love if you stop the podcast immediately when when, when we're done here and uh, just write an email to a single person that you know and recommend the podcast to her or him. Spread the word. Spread the word. Okay, email is okay. Social media is okay as well. As long as you do spread the word, we're happy to. Thank you so much. Talk to you in two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye.